And as we go into the word today, your word says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And we receive that by now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look at this person next to you and say, God planned for you to prosper. That's why he created you in his own image. That's why you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's why before you were even a thought in your mother's womb, look at somebody and say, God knew you. And he ordained you for his purpose. And he's already got a prosperity plan laid out for your life. The first nine months that you were in your mother's womb, somebody say, you were on cruise control. You didn't have to do a thing but allow God to do what God does. He protects us. He provides for us. He's a priest for us. And we come into this world, he has the plan for us to prosper. And people say, well, great job, God, but we can take it from here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we get on a world's plan that looks at prosperity is who I am is what I got. Who I am is what I do. Who I am is my reputation. And the most prosperous person who ever lived on this earth made of himself no reputation. The most prosperous person that ever lived on this earth, praise God, never owned a home. He never even wrote a book. His name is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. But of all the people who've ever walked the earth, he was more prosperous than any one of them. He said, what's the profit, y'all, to gain the whole world and lose your soul? So God wants you to prosper. God planned for you to prosper. And God says, but do you really know what prosperity is? God wants you to first of all know that prosperity is not what you attain. Prosperity is what you overcome. Do I have any overcomers in here today? Praise God. Oh, it ain't, you know, things can happen in your life. Interruptions are part of the normal scenery in life. But if you've got God with you, if you've got God's presence with you, if you've got the greatest presence with you, whatever comes by the will of God, have I got a witness? It shall be met by the grace of God. Amen. And that's what prosperity is all about. God says before you were even thought of by your mother and your father, I knew you. I selected you and I ordained you and you were purposed to please me. Yes. Do I have anybody that's made up your mind that your purpose is to please God, oh, not yes. man? Yes. Yes. My purpose is not to please me, it's to please God. Yes. Because he has taught me that if I take care of his business, he will take care of my business. And we be working too hard in the world. Trying to do it our way when God has already made a way out of no way. All you've got to do to prosper is to first of all make up your mind at this season of your life to place no other God before him. Make up your mind to, to, to love him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Praise God. He wants a love relationship with you. He wants you to not just know of him, but to really know him. And when you know him, you can't help but love him. Because he is an awesome lover. The Bible says that he loves us with an everlasting love. And he loves you so much and ain't nothing you can do about it. And sometime in your life it was with a love that made him glad. Sometime it was with a love that made him sad. But he just kept on loving us anyhow. Because he's determined that we would prosper. And as we place our hearts and minds on the focus of pleasing God. Somebody say you were planned for God's pleasure. What does that mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. 
The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Yes. God is in the blessing business. Oh, yeah. And he loves to bless his children. Yes. You are created in God's own image, but when you have a child that's obedient, when you have a child that's serving you and doing what they're supposed to do, when you have a child, you come home and the, the room is already clean and made up and you go in the kitchen and my goodness, the kitchen is already clean and the dishes are already washed. Don't you enjoy blessing that child? Don't you go around saying, ain't no child like the one I got. <laughs> And the child that no matter what you get them, they're grateful for it. Yeah. And they go around, oh, mama, thank you so much for getting this for me. Thank you for thinking about me. Well, if you know how to bless your children, how much more does God know how to bless his children? Yeah. Yeah. He's looking to see who he can bless. Yes. But he wants you, once he bless you, not to worship the creation but to worship the creator. Yeah. He wants you to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from where? Above, it came from him. Yeah. And no matter who brought it to you, he sent it to you. Yeah. He put it on their mind to bless you. And he says you got to understand that the prosperity comes from God. It's not what you attain. It's what you overcome. Yes. We were formed for God's family. God gave his son's life so that he could have a family. He already had a son. He already had the Holy Spirit. And God wasn't lonely, but God has so much love. That he gave his only begotten son yes. so that we could be a part of his family. Yes. Yes. And a big part of your prospering on earth, praise God, is to become a part of his family. Yes. Yes. But once you get in the world and there can be so many challenges in family that God says, why don't you get to know me? so that you can understand what real family is all about. Oh, yes. The Bible lets us know that a family is a big part of God's plan. Now, again, I was reading a poster the other day, and, and we got paternal family, but it also says that your friends are your church family. That's the family that you chose to have. Yes. And I'm going to say it's a wonderful thing to have friends and a church family. It's a wonderful thing to have some family that's going to love you anyhow. It's a wonderful thing to have people to say, ain't no need you telling me nothing bad about my sister in Christ because I'm going to love her anyhow. I'm going to love him anyhow. Sometimes with a love that makes me glad, sometimes with a love that makes me sad, but my love is unconditional. And I'm going to stick by that person when they're right and I'm going to pray for them when they're wrong. Yes, because that's the way God loves us. And he wants us to prosper in family. He wants us to know what love is all about. That's why he tells us in relationship that, that the key to a happy relationship is you got two people that love God with all their heart. Do I have anybody that really love him today? Yes. Then he says to his male friends, he tells to all of us men, now, if I bless you with someone, you've got to love that person the way Christ loved the church. Yes. How did Christ love the church? He sacrificed his life for the church. Yes. He did everything he could to protect the church and provide the church and to be a priest for the church. Yes. And that's a big part of the role that he gave us as men. And then he tells women that you submit to his leadership in the Lord. And how many snow praise God when we get a, in a will alignment with God's will? That prosperity remains. When you have someone 
that loves you the way Christ loved the church. We call that a Ephesians 5 man. And when he finds a Proverbs 13 woman, a woman who fears the Lord, the Bible says is worthy to be play, praised. Yes. Do you know what that creates? A 1 Corinthians 13 love. That's a love that never fails. The Bible says that it's a love that's patient and it's a love that's kind. It's a love that's never envious, boastful, conceited, rude, selfish, or offensive. Yeah. But I could go through the whole uh, 1 Corinthians, but the thing that I love most about that love, it says that it never fails. Yes. Because what two or more are gathered together in my name, what does God promise? Yeah. There I am in the midst of them. And that's what prosperity is all about. It's not about a bank account, praise God. It's not about how you look, praise God. But it's about a love in relationship with God in the midst. Yes. And he wants us to be a part of his family. You know, in the world, the problem with too many people, they think they're not supposed to have no problems. Yeah. Somebody say, that's their problem. <laughs> but with God, if you never had the problem, how could you learn that with God's help, you can solve them? How many of us know God is a great problem solver? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He's a burden bearer. Yeah. He's a heavy load sharer. Yeah. And sometimes he has to let you know, baby, I don't need that job to take care of you. Yeah. If you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business. I can feed you with manna from heaven. I can give you water from a rock. Yes. But you've got to be a part of my family. Yes. And God's family, love is supreme. He wants us to love one another as Christ loved the church. If we're going to be prosperous, God says you've got to understand that you are shaped for my service. And God is looking for his children today, praise God, to grow up to the point to where we're not just asking God to bless what we're doing. God says, why don't you bless what I'm doing? Why don't you understand that he who is great is she who is greatest shall be your servant. Yes. And he or she who is servant will be greatest of all. He had to teach that to James and John. They came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, we know that you're the man, 50 grand. But when you get in your kingdom, do us a favor. Let me sit on your left hand side and, and let my brother sit on your right hand side in your glory. And Jesus looked at James and John. They were a part of his inner circle along with Peter. And he said, do you really know what you're asking? Do you really, really, really want to receive what you're asking? And then he went on to say, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Somebody say the cup of suffering. Cup of suffering. Can you be baptized in the baptism of suffering? But to sit on my left and to sit on my right, it's not mine to give. It's given to mine those who were prepared. In other words, it's given to those who serve the most. And what I love about that, all of us can be great in the kingdom because all of us can serve. You got an equal opportunity to be great because you have an equal opportunity to serve God. You have to make the shift to realize it's not about being served, but it's about serving others. Jesus said to those who got it, when I was hungry, did you feed me? Did anybody feed anybody this week? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison, did you visit me? And when I was sick, did you take care of me? He says that you are my hands and my feet on earth. And what I want you to do, praise God, when you see an opportunity, when you see a need, praise God, be my hands and my feet to meet the need. And the beautiful thing that I love about God, he tells us, give and it shall be given. How many believe that you can have the things in life you want if you help enough other people get what right. they want? Yeah. 
That's the way it works with God, praise God. If you want more, give more. It may be a time in your life when you may need help or you're waiting to receive help, but it's very few times when you can't give help. Because there's always somebody that's in a worse off condition than you. You can be saying, hey, I need some shoes. And the God will say, how about that person that don't have no feet? Why don't you do what you can to help that person's life? Yes. And God is challenging you today that, that he shaped you for his service. He gave you spiritual gifts so that you could not only serve the church, but you could serve others in the world. How many thank God for your spiritual gifts today? Yes. The Bible says those gifts will make room for you. And you got to understand that these gifts are not always given to you in full bloom. But you got to develop your gift. How do you develop your gift? By using your gift. Yes. Yes. And the more you use your gift, yes. the better the gift will form for you. Yes, sir. And God is saying, praise God, be a person who's a cheerful giver when it comes to service for God. Amen. He has given you a heart to serve God. And God is saying, if you really want to prosper, have a heart to be about the Father's business. Yes. Jesus was 12 years young when he gave us the revelation of this. He's talking to the young people in here today. You don't have to wait until you old of age before you understand your purpose in life. At 12 years age of age, he was in the temple and, 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 and men were amazed at how wise Jesus was. They were amazed at how he understood the scriptures. They were amazed at how he was able to share the scriptures and that lets us know that he studied the scriptures. Yes. And as his parents came looking for him, he simply said to them, you're not going to find me, as I paraphrase, at Wedding Wow. You're not going to find me at Six Flags. Don't you know? I got to be about my father's business. And the earlier you realize that your purpose in life is to be about your father's business, the better it is for you. Jesus is saying, don't spend your life going out in the world and then having to come back like the prodigal son Sometimes in life, people say, well, you know, I just need to go out there and learn from my own experiences. Uh, uh, and, and you got to understand something. Some people think ex personal experience is the best teacher, but I'm a big advocate in getting your OPE degree yeah. and learning from other people's experience. Yeah. Have I got a witness that can save you a lot of time? Yeah. It can save you a lot of trouble. I don't need to touch electricity to realize that if you get shocked, <laughs> it can take your life. Yeah. I got an OPE degree from people that done got shocked before. I got a personal testimony from a friend that said he got shocked one day and he told the folks at work, I'm going home. <laughs> but it's not time to go home. I'll get back with you tomorrow. <laughs> And anything that can shock you like that, I don't have to touch it to realize I don't need to touch it. And God is saying that everything that he gave us to do in our life, every commandment that he told us to do is for our benefit. The Bible says God's commandments are not grievous. Now, how many of us have learned from the school of hard knocks? That God wasn't trying to hold nothing back from you. He just wanted the very best for you. Yeah. Yeah. The devil's going to always be there. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to tell you in relationships. Oh man, it's alright to read the menu as, as long as you don't order nothing. Yeah. He's going to tell you in relationships. You know, uh, 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 you know I'm going to test drive it. <laughs> before I buy it. Yeah. But when you fall for his short-term gain yes, that comes with a lot of long-term pain, you look back over it and you say, man, God wasn't trying to hold nothing back. He just wanted what was best yes. for me. Yes, he did. Yes. The thief only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
But Jesus said, I came that you would have life more abundantly. So he gave us his special gifts. He gave us a heart. He gave us abilities. He gave us a, a passion. And he gave us all experiences. And God says, I want you to use those experiences for my glory. Yes. And when you get this, y'all, Romans 8 and 28 reminds us that we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I'm thankful for people that have taught us this, praise God. I'm thankful uh, uh, for people like Candy Lightner, praise God, when her, 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 her child was abducted and she started an organization. Now, excuse me, her child was run over by a drunk driver and she started an organization called Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. So instead of saying, why me, Lord, she said, use me, Lord. Yeah. And she used that experience to help all of us become safer on the highways. I'm thankful for people like Joyce Meyer, praise God. You know her testimony and how her father had misabused her as a child. But when she was asked, would I change anything? She said, no, because God has blessed me to help thousands of people. Yes. To overcome that challenge. Yes. And God is saying you were shaped for his service. Yes. You were formed for his family. You were purposed to please God. Yes. And you were created in his own image. God is saying that everything that comes to you by the will of God. It will be met by the grace of God. And as I come to this. I'm reminded of a man by the name of Joseph in the Bible. Yes. Because when you understand the life of Joseph, you really get the vision that prosperity is not about what you obtain, it's about what you overcome. Joseph went through a situation in his family to where one day his father gave him a coat of many colors. And you know, after he had received that, his brothers got jealous of him. And all of a sudden, one day, they decided to get rid of Joseph. And the first thing they were going to do is to put him in a, a, a pit. But all of a sudden, through God's providence, a caravan came by and they ended up selling him into slavery. But even in slavery, somebody say he still had prosperity. Everywhere he went in his life, praise God, uh, as a slave, he was sold to Potiphar. And Potiphar recognized very quickly that he had the prosperity of God on him. And Potiphar's wealth began to grow because Joseph was managing his wealth. And all of a sudden, as it began to grow, praise God, folks start looking at you and says, man, everything this dude has, it's like the Midas touch. How many have ever heard of the Midas touch? Yeah. Everything he touches is blessed. Yeah. It turns into gold. Yeah. And you got to understand, this don't mean you're not going to go through some challenges because one day Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph. Not only is he blessed, but he's handsome. And she got with him and tried to get him to sleep with her. And he said, ma'am, how could I do this? I'm already being blessed by your husband. And, and it would be not right to him. And it certainly wouldn't be not right in God's eyes. But how much know sometimes you go through haters in life? When you're prospering, you got to understand haters will come out. And if Satan can't get to you personally, he'll try to get through you through other people. And as a result of that, she falsely accused him of rape. But then they put him in jail and how much know he had prosperity in jail? Before long, he's running to jail. Because the jail and no man, this guy is blessed. And everything he say comes true. He's got the presence of God in his life. And I say to you today, God's presence will always be our greatest presence. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Even when we're going through the valley, he's with us. And he wants you to understand that it's not just what you attain, that's the world. It's what you overcome. And God took Joseph from the prison the next thing you know, he's in the palace yes. running the whole country. 
all because he had God's prosperity. The baker and the butler uh, got the prophecy from him. And when Pharaoh had a, 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 a dream and he didn't know what to do with the dream, he said, I know a man in jail that can help you with your dream. And the next thing, he was running the kingdom of Egypt. Yes. Yes. And when he got a chance to get back at his brothers, he did exactly the way a person with God's prosperity receives things. He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. How many can say it today about the things that have happened in your life? Yet yeah, the devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God will make a way out of no way. Yes, he will. If you just understand that the key to your prosperity is God. Thank God for Joseph. But I heard the spirit teaching us about the apostle Paul. Because every saint has a past. Uh And every sinner has a glorious future in Christ Jesus. Paul, if he was here today, you know what he called himself? The chief of sinners. He said, none of y'all was as bad as I was when I was in the world, praise God. I did all kinds of things, but how many know when you get a real touch from the Lord, your life is never the same, praise God. And God took him from Saul of Tarsus to Paul the apostle, praise God. And he said to him, Paul, I got to show you how you got to suffer with me. Because the thing about suffering, if you want to reign with Christ, you got to be willing to suffer with Christ. See, the world wants prosperity to be just having a good time, having a lot of money. Every day is summer and spring. But life is not made that way. All of us are going to go through some storms in this life. But it's not what happens to you. It's what happens in you. And Paul gave us this word, praise God, when he understood the prosperity of God. He said, after going through a shipwreck, after three times receiving 39 lashes, after being bit by a snake, after being stoned and left for dead, He says, I reckon the present sufferings are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm persuaded. I got my mind made up that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Do I have anybody that feel that way? I don't care what I'm going through in this life. Yes, sometimes you may go through some illnesses. But God says, speak the word and not your circumstances. Call things that are not as though they are until they are. Don't look at what you see, but say what God's word says. And you will be prosperous in God's eyes. Because it's not about what you obtain. It's what you overcome. And many of us have had different challenges in tests in life. And God is saying, don't get weary. In well doing. Don't get to focusing on what somebody else seemed like they going through compared to what you're going through. Because your life has been designed by my hands. And if I allow you to go through it, I will see you through it. But you got to keep your faith even in the midst of trials and tribulations. We got a lot of folks in life that say, well, Lord, give me the easy road. Just keep all my children on the A on the road. Make sure me and my honey never have any arguments, you know. Give us a nice home. But God's too wise for that, y'all. All sunshine and no rain will make a desert. And God is saying, baby, I got to get you prepared for anything and everything that will happen in this life. Paul went on to teach us that I've learned in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. How many has got a satisfied mind that no matter what I'm going through, as long as I got the Lord, as long as I got King Jesus, it's already all right. He'll never leave me, nor forsake me. And as long as he got me, it's already all right. That's what prosperity is all about. Jesus is saying to somebody here today, I know the plans that I have for you. He designs the plan in your life. Your plan may be different from my plan. 
And her plan is different from his plan, but he's designed your plan. And the plan is to prosper you. He's made up his mind from the very beginning to prosper you in all that you do, to give you hope and to give you a good future in Christ Jesus. And we got so many that have made up their mind that that's not the prosperity that they want. They want prosperity to be measured by their bank accounts. I got more things than you. I got more cars than you. I got better clothes than you. But Jesus said one day to those who thought like that, what's the profit? To gain the whole world. And lose your soul. Yeah. You're going to die broke like everybody else is going to die broke. Yeah. And if you fall for that type of prosperity yeah. and don't live a life that's pleasing to God, your end won't be well. Yes. Your life is like a book. The past is already written. The present you're writing every day. The future, unless it's written in Christ. It's not going to have a happy ending. And God says to you today, his plan is to prosper you. Yes. His plan is for you to live a blessed life. But the blessing is not by what you got. Yes, sir. The blessing is on who you got. Yes. And if you got Jesus, somebody say that's enough. If you can receive it, give God praise today. That's enough, God. As long as I got you in my life, I'm prosperous. As long as I got a fair portion of health and strength, I'm prosperous. As long as I'm clothed in my right mind, I'm prosperous. As long as I got my family, I'm prosperous. Father, we thank you for true prosperity. The prosperity that comes only from you. Father, you came, you sent your son Jesus that we may have life, that we may have it more abundantly. That life is Zoe, the God quality of life. Yeah. Spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, in our families, in our careers, in our relationships. Father, we depend upon you to supply all our needs. And the prosperity that you gave us, it only comes by you. We receive it today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Give God a praise offering today.